welcome to Knee of the Curve, where the most extreme technological change is happening. That's what we talk about here. I'm your host, Emmett Short. President Biden just signed an executive order on cryptocurrency, which finally says unequivocally, without a doubt, this administration knows that cryptocurrency exists. Yeah, they know about it. They know it's a thing now. And from what their grandkids have told them about it, it's the bee's knees. The cat's pajamas, the ant's pants, you know, the pig's wings, the monkey's eyebrows, the eel's ankles. It's good. They think it's going to be good. Except, of course, for the areas where it's total malarkey, like the environmental impact, which we're going to get to in a second, I know. But uh, first, the decree also states that this administration has intentions to begin to form a committee to make a recommendation on whether or not to study the potential of convening a working group to assess the benefits of possibly acknowledging that research into the viability of announcing a crypto regulatory committee should maybe, maybe be considered. Oh God, there's nothing. There's nothing. There are no rules yet. This is, this is all just foreplay. But, uh, whew, oh mama, it's working. Here's live footage of Michael Saylor hearing the news. You're in my house now, Corn Pop. Come on, man. We gotta have Bitcoin regulation. I'm not kidding around. We gotta have rules. What do you say? It'll be great for the protocol of Bitcoin. <laughs> yep, the Bitcoin community is hot for rules. The big question Biden wants to be answered is how bad is Bitcoin for the environment? The question no one seems to be asking is how bad is cash for the environment? Do they think digging massive trenches in the planet to gather a fairly useless metal like gold is carbon neutral somehow? I guess all those chemicals used to print dollar bills are technically green. So anyway, at my own expense, I commissioned my own study called fucking Google. And lo and behold, I found answers. Crypto.com's debit card and trading platform is far and away my favorite. They have the highest staking percentages, 14% on stable coins. That's crazy. The most cash back of any card, and they give you free Netflix and Spotify and Amazon, depending on your level. I don't have a deal with them. I just love them, and you can make 25 bucks if you use my link. All right, let me just defend Bitcoin real quick before I go on the attack. Here's a summary of the major argument against Bitcoin and the energy debate. This is from Coindesk. The argument goes like this. Bitcoin consumes a lot of energy. In fact, the energy cost of one Bitcoin transaction is about $200. Second, Bitcoin settles about 300,000 transactions a day. Combine one and two, do the math, works out to about 60 million a day. If you try to do all the world's transactions with Bitcoin, it'll use more energy than exists on Earth. If this were to be believed and you use these numbers, it does work out to about a $22 trillion energy bill per year. That's a lot more than the $5 trillion energy bill the world has today. The problem is this is all wrong, but that doesn't stop people from getting confused. Even people who have our best interests at heart, like top climate journalist, Eric Holthus, who used this argument to say that Bitcoin would require 14 times the world's total electricity just to process the 1 billion credit card transactions that take place every day. He says it makes the world worse in exactly the opposite way that it's trying to help. This is 100% wrong. So it's not clear if this dude is just misinformed or if he's in the pocket of big money. The reality is one transaction does not equal one payment. Bitcoin is a base upon which other payment networks can be built. So you've got Bitcoin down here. It's like a base layer and you've got these transactions happening, 300,000 or so a day. But you've also got these other layers running on top of the Bitcoin network. You may have heard of the Lightning Network, but there are other ones, including transactions that happen on exchanges and new trust models called Liquid and Rootstock. There are smart contracts like Blockstack. If you haven't heard of all these, that's fine. The point is there are layers on top of Bitcoin, and these layers are also processing a ton of payments. With each Bitcoin transaction, you could end up processing 
millions of payments. There's transactions on transactions on transactions. That makes the big $200 transaction that's handling millions of payments pretty cheap. But let's stop playing defense. Let's play offense. This is the study from the Fletcher School, Tufts University. How green is the greenback? An analysis of the environmental costs of cash in the United States. So first, the environmental impact of cash. In 2020, the U.S. printed more than 5 billion new cash notes. Production requires raw materials. Cotton is the main ingredient in U.S. cash, water, energy, and fuel. Each of these inputs has its own price and translates to the cost of CO2 that it produces. Basically, they're just adding up how much water, electricity, sludge, and uh, raw materials, what that cost is to the environment. This is all linked down in the description if you want to study exactly how they measured the cost. Long story short, the environmental cost of U.S. cash notes amounts to 26 cents annually per note. On the other hand, per Bitcoin, and this includes mining and transactions, they estimate each Bitcoin to cost $70 in CO2 released annually. If you multiply the annual environmental cost of a banknote, which is 26 cents, by the 50 billion U.S. banknotes in circulation, the annual total environmental cost is is 12.9 billion but this is high compared to bitcoin each costing the environment 70 per year multiplied by 19 million bitcoins mined to date results in 1.3 billion in environmental cost it's important to note that they're comparing one banknote to one bitcoin now, actually, each banknote on average is worth about $34. Currently, Bitcoin's sitting at around 40 k If you divide Bitcoin's value by the value of the average banknote, that means the average Bitcoin banknote, if there were such a thing, would be worth $1,176. So if you're looking at two banknotes, and both cost the environment $2, but one's giving you $34 worth of economic value and the other one's giving you $1,176 worth of economic value, it's clear Bitcoin is giving us way more value for the same cost to the environment. In summary, one, miscalculations for the energy cost of transactions on the Bitcoin blockchain that we talked about. Millions of payments can happen in a single Bitcoin transaction. Number two, there's a complete lack of public knowledge on the cost versus reward of creating banknotes versus mining Bitcoin. We're getting way more economic value for the same amount of destruction to the environment. Number three, there's no end in sight for mining gold and printing banknotes, so the cost to the environment is going to continue forever. But after 2140, all Bitcoins will have been created, so the environmental cost of creating Bitcoin after 2140 will be zero. After that, the energy consumption of Bitcoin will be all about transactions which are far less energy intensive than actually mining Bitcoin. Here's my thoughts. And this is an important note for people that want to point out the fact that Bitcoin is bad for the environment. I'm not arguing with you. I'm simply saying fiat, way worse. Any type of monetary system is going to require energy and energy is going to have an effect on the environment. The better choice is crypto, even the energy intensive proof of work model. I just want to point out this article is only looking at cash, banknotes, paper notes versus Bitcoin. They have not factored in mining gold or minting coins. Did you guys know Coinstar uses more energy than Norway? Okay, I made that up, but Coinstars are always plugged in. Am I wrong? No. Also, people drive their coins from their house to the Coinstar. Then Coinstar's got to send trucks to transport heavy metals using, yeah, I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. Without crypto, if I want to move a very large sum of money from one country to another, I have to drive myself to the bank. I have to exchange one currency for another currency. I have to throw it all in a duffel bag, drive home, use duct tape to strap it to my body so it fits flush underneath my clothes, or I gotta roll it up and put it in a condom and shove it up a donkey. I, who's got time? I'm trying to get business done like an American. They say Bitcoin is used for crime, but we would have had a really explicit history of all the transactions that went to Jeffrey Epstein. It's public information. Sorry, Prince Andrew, that's your Bitcoin address. This is <laughs> Epstein's 
Uh, smoking gun, buddy. But it is tough to track payments in blood diamonds, which I'm sure have zero environmental impact. So, strange name. Watch this video to stay up to speed on how fast you're being left behind. Leave your thoughts in the comments, even the weird ones, especially the weird ones. I have algorithmic Stockholm Syndrome, so like and share, or take it to the next level and join Patreon and help make high-tech lowbrow. And if you wanna be a part of the team and write jokes, DM me on Twitter and Discord. Click subscribe or let the AI radicalize you, your choice. See you in the future.